and to move this. But the geography is still the same. Does everybody understand that? Okay? Then there's more engagement, and Lysimachus and Seleucus engage in warfare with one another. And Seleucus is the winner of that fight. So he gets Greece, Turkey, Babylon, and Syria. While Ptolemy still has Egypt. And all of this history occurs between verse 4 and verse 5. Okay, so we have the four kings, Ptolemy, Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and they have these four territories, Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Babylon, Syria. Okay, Lysimachus and Cassander fight in war together, Lysimachus is the, is the winner of that fight. So he gets that territory. So in the second stage, you have Ptolemy has Egypt, so Ptolemy has Egypt, Lysimachus has uh, Greece and Turkey, Seleucus has Babylon and Syria. Then Lysimachus and Seleucus fight together, and then Seleucus, Seleucus wins that fight, so he takes all of this territory. So you end up in this third stage here, in the fourth stage, you have this situation where you have two kings. You have Ptolemy who is ruling Egypt, and you have Seleucus who is ruling this territory of Turkey, Babylon, and Syria. Okay? Does that make sense? It was Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah, anyway, I've understood now. Does that make sense? Sorry. <clears throat> I'm keeping this simple. There is some complexity in that. And when you do some of your own research, you'll see that there are some minor differences that you might come through. But conceptually, it's in agreement with what I've done. And, and I'm aware of, of some minor, which might have been to be inconsistencies, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So, I'm just trying to show you how you get a king of the north and a king of the south. Okay? I do have the dates of those battles, um, but I'll probably give them over lunch or something. Um, I, uh, people might be get involved down in that. So I, I've, got, I've got most of the dates for all of that engagement. So I'm going to erase all of this. And I just want to highlight this point. Remember when we said that the whole point of Daniel 11 and the history that's given is because it's the engagement of these nations in reference to God's people. Yeah? This idea comes up over and over again that from the perspective of the scriptures and prophecy, if this was Jerusalem and this is the world, it really is that kind of understanding that Jerusalem is, is regarded as being the centre of the world. Okay, so everything's regarded from the point of view of Jerusalem or Israel. Okay? And so when it talks about the King of the North and the King of the South, the reason it uses that terminology is because this power is south of Israel. And this power is north of Israel. So that's why you can use the terminology of the King of the South and the King of the North. Because they're north and south of Israel. And, that, and that's from geography. <laughs> that, that's what that, that's you call it, yeah? Okay. So let's erase all of that. So now we're in verse 5. And we're going to be dealing with these two powers in the next few verses, which are the Seleucid Empire, the King of the North, and the uh, Ptolemic Empire, which is the King of the South. <clears throat> in case you didn't notice it, I'm, I'm sure there's some people who, who, have, who have, you'll notice that when I said Greece fitted into two, 
and I had the king of the north and the king of the south. Remember that, that was called here. And I said that the king of the south was Egypt. And you notice I said the king of the north was Syria. Okay? And that might throw some people because prophetically we would be thinking that the king of the north is actually Babylon. Okay? Because we know that theme or that idea of Babylon runs through the scriptures. Yeah? And when you take get this idea of the king of the south or the south, Egypt is identified again in the scriptures. It's identified both in the book of Revelation and in the book of Daniel. And Babylon, literal Babylon is mentioned in the book of Daniel, and the spiritual Babylon is mentioned in the book of Revelation. But Syria isn't. Does everybody, does everybody pick up that point? Or maybe some people didn't. The reason I mentioned Syria is because the Grecian Empire its centre of authority was based in Syria. But, when <coughs> Seleucus, with that chart that I just drew there, of the four generals, when he had Seleucus and he had the territory of Syria and Babylon, Babylon is the first territory that he held onto. That was the first territory that he held, and then he took Syria as well. So that's why, from a prophetic point of view, we should be thinking about it being, the king of the north is prophetically Babylon, but historically, the warfare was centred around Syria. Is that, is that, in case you've got concern about that, I hope that's put that to bed and settled that. Okay. Verse 5. So now we're going to be getting into, um, into kind of the history of this, and hope that we don't get too bogged down in this, in this history. <coughs> so, is dealing the time frame for this is 323 to 280 BC in the dates and <coughs> What I'm meaning by this, by this, by these dates, is that by 200, 323 was when Alexander the Great died. We pick that up in verse three, in verse four, sorry, verse three and verse four. Yeah, and 280 BC. By this stage. We have two kingdoms. The king of the north and the king of the south. So in verse 5, we've already reached in this time frame where we've got the two kings. Does everybody understand that? So when we did that chart down at the bottom, and we went from four kings to two, by the time you get to two kings, that, that date is 280 BC. The starting point we have two kingdoms is actually 281. 281. Um, 281 is from which way? Okay, I'll do this. I'll, I'll do this. Yeah, so we have uh, one, two, three, four kingdoms. Then these two go into one kingdom. So we have one, two, three kingdoms. Then these two go into one kingdom. And we have one and two. Yeah, that's the chart that we have before we get four kings, four king, then three, and then finally two. When we get to this date here, we're at 481 BC. That's the date that we're at. 281, sorry. Yeah, 281. Two eight one is yes, when you've got to the stage where this battle between these two kings, Lysimachus and Seleucus, occurs in two eight one. When this king is killed, he's killed in two eight one, and then you've only got two kings left.
So verse 5 says this. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. <coughs> so we've got two powers identified here. Or two people, should I say. We have the king of the south, and then he says, one of his princes. Can you see those two people identified? So the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes. When you go to Daniel 11, you're going to see an inordinate amount of um, um, pronouns. So you're going to get this term he and him coming up over and over again, he and him. And we have to distinguish who the him and the he is, whether it's the king of the south or the king of the north. And sometimes it's not that straightforward to do that. So. Um, it's critical to get that correct so you can get your history correct. But that's going to come up over and over again. And it comes up in this verse because it says, one of his princes. So you have to ask yourself the question, who is the his? Who is the his? So, from my understanding, this his here is the king of the south. Okay, so I'll give you the, the historical background of that. So the king of the south is the king of Egypt. And it says that he shall be strong. So the king of Egypt that is strong is the first king. His name is Ptolemy the first. From 323 to 285 BC. So the king of the north that is strong is the first king of Egypt, Ptolemy the first. And then it says, one of his princes shall be strong. This prince that is here is actually Seleucus. Lucas was the Lucas that was one of the four generals of Alexander that we spoke about, and it's in the intricacies and details of all of this that we that we, get, we need to get to grips with. On are the scriptures correct or not? Now, Sir Lucas originally we said was ruling Babylonia, Babylon and Syria. Yeah, we, we showed that he was ruling Babylon, but. When he was only in Babylon, there was a warfare between him and another general, and he lost his kingdom, he lost the kingdom of Babylon for a short period of time. And when he lost the kingdom of Babylon, he actually went to be one of the generals of the king of the south of Ptolemy. So he fled to Egypt and was um, one of the generals in the army under Ptolemy. And so as a general in the army of Ptolemy, he then... <coughs> went to fight back again with the, the general who had overtaken the kingdom of Babylon and he won back his kingdom. So when it says here that one of his princes is actually one of the king of the south princes who was actually Seleucus. So that's why he says he's one of the princes. And in the second part of the verse it says and he shall be strong above him. Everybody see that? Your book, it says, he shall be as strong above him. The he, this he here, is the king of the north. And it's talking about Seleucus. First of all, he was a, first of all, he was a king. Then, he becomes, he flees from Babylon and works for Ptolemy and becomes his prince. And then, in the battle between Egypt and Babylon, he regains his kingdom and he takes his title back again as king of the north. And that's why it says that he, Sir Lucas the first, shall be strong above the king of Egypt, king of the south. Someone's looking puzzled. Don't forget 